This is Glow in the Dark Radio. 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 The Science Fiction Podcast with original independent science fiction written and performed by Mike Luoma with music by Kevin McLeod the Vatican Assassin Trilogy and the Adventures of Alibi Jones by Mike Luoma are available in ebook, trade paperback and audiobook wherever you find your books online get links and details at glowinthedarkradio.com This is the Science Fiction Podcast, Glow in the Dark Radio. I'm your host, your writer and reader, Mike Luoma. I've got Chapter 19 of Vatican Ambassador on the way on this episode. BC is wondering, what scares the Eldred? The advanced alien race known as the Eldred may be responsible for the plague now threatening to wipe out the human race, but they just hosted BC our former Vatican assassin, now the effing Pope, as he met with the eldest of the Eldred, who admitted to the plague, but stressed that it was not designed to eliminate humankind, just to contain us. Humans are evidently the reemergence of a powerful ancient race the Eldred call the Ancient Enemy. If we agree to contain ourselves within our solar system and not to bother the rest of the universe, the plague will end. They sort of sent BC on his way, but then almost immediately got back in touch, asking for an emergency meeting. BC has a hunch this might have something to do with a strange dream or mental encounter BC had while visiting the Eldred. So, Now, B.C. heads out to the secret asteroid base of the project to meet again with the Eldred at their emergency request. So, again, what scares the Eldred? We'll see if we can find out in Chapter 19 of Vatican Ambassador, coming up on Glow in the Dark Radio. I actually don't have too much in the way of book news as we're getting into the new year. Not a lot going on. The sales have ended, and so we're going to steam right ahead into the chapter after I say a big thank you to my patrons who help keep the podcast going. And if you want to find out more about becoming a patron, you can do so at patreon.com slash glowinthedarkradio, or just go to glowinthedarkradio.com and click on the link for Patreon. We'll get into Chapter 19 next on Glow in the Dark Radio. The Flash Pulp Podcast. Three to ten minutes of fiction brought to you thrice weekly. Now it's three, three, three apocalypses in one. Yeah! Suffering from tough, stuck-on humans? Well, twenty hellish hours of suffocation in the all-encompassing web of Carwick the Spider God will get them right out. Too many brains lying around? The ravenous mouths surrounding zombie-fighting Ruby will quickly clean those up. Nosy neighbors, infect them with the murder plague and watch as they dissolve into paranoid maniacs bent on the preemptive assassination of their friends and family. Why stop at one end of the world when you can have all three? You can find them all at flashpulp.com or search for them on iTunes. Now here's Chapter 19 of Vatican Ambassador on Glow in the Dark Radio. An Eldred ship sits waiting in the landing bay as BC arrives at the asteroid base on the fourth day after his call from the eldest of the Eldred. They got here yesterday, Anita tells BC over the comm on the bridge of the transport ship. They seem anxious, different, all the base personnel are noticing, weird. 
and they keep asking for word of your arrival, quite insistently from what I've heard. Not like them at all. A soft thump tells BC they've landed. BC disembarks from the ship to face a waiting crowd of Eldred and base personnel. Anita leads the group of Eldred up to the ship. The human techs come forward to take care of the ship. We couldn't keep them away, one of the techs tells BC under his breath as he passes him. Yes, says one of the Eldred, stepping up to BC. We have been anxiously awaiting your arrival. BC recognizes the alien. The eldest of the Eldred? Here? This has got to be big. Maybe they're ready to give us the plague cure. I worried about an assassination run, but if the eldest is here, that's a lot less likely. Pleasant thought. Hello again, BC says to the Eldred. Is there somewhere we might speak privately? The eldest of the Eldred asks him. Right to the point, I'll give him that. BC looks to Anita. We've got a meeting room nearby, follow me, she says. She leads the group of them out of the landing bay and into the base. The five Eldred follow Anita and BC to a conference room a short distance inside the facility. The room reminds BC of the conference room back on the moon. Same furniture, great chairs, translucent blue oval table, same room design. No stars here, though. Probably too far inside the rock. BC walks over to one head of the table. The eldest of the Eldred almost automatically gravitates toward the other end. Anita closes the door behind her. As soon as the door closes, the eldest of the Eldred begins to speak. We have a major problem. When last we spoke, we could speak of the ancient enemy in the past tense, stories of a million years ago. The eldest pauses. It almost looks like he's in pain. This is no longer the case, the eldest of the Eldred says with dread in his voice. One of the ancients has been awakened. The Eldred looks down. The ancient enemy has returned. BC sits in stunned silence. He looks over at Anita. Wish I could think more security into the area. They may be here to kill us after all. BC sees Anita touch a small button on some kind of communicator at her side. She's doing something. Maybe some kind of silent alarm? Good girl. Anita nods at him. Please explain, BC says. You told me you wiped them out a million years ago. Not all of the members of the race we call the ancient enemy were destroyed, the eldest of the Eldred says with a deep sigh. Long ago we discovered that one of their race had been kept in suspended animation, placed there by others of his kind before their end, as a punishment for unknown crimes. A criminal among the cutthroats? The worst of a bad bunch? So bad, even his own people put him away? His very existence was concealed from us for thousands of years by a race called the Snacked, the eldest of the Eldred explains. When we discovered that the Snacked were hiding one of the ancient enemy, we took control of the capsule he was sealed inside. The capsule's technology was beyond us, self-contained and apparently designed for permanent storage. We could not penetrate or affect the capsule. The capsule has remained undisturbed on Eldre for over 600,000 of your years. Until now. Now this one has somehow, er, uh, fought out and escaped. The eldest of the Eldred goes silent. What he's just had to relay to BC has clearly drained him. What? One of them is alive? You didn't tell me about anything like this, BC says, amazed. It was not a concern. The capsule had functioned and contained him for centuries, the eldest of the Eldred says. So, BC says, trying to contain his growing anger with the fuzzy blue alien. What else are you hiding? The eldest of the Eldred is clearly taken aback. He glances at the other four Eldred with him. Look, BC says, you made it sound like this was all a million years ago. BC forces his point. This was all in the past. You never told me you had one of them stored away on ice. Please, calm yourself, Campion, the eldest of the Eldred says. We were impressed by your candor. Al Salid was also quite forthright, but we could not reach him after he left us. That is why we came to see you. We are here because we need your help. My help, BC asks, disbelieving. Are you sure? How can I help you? BC pauses for a thought. And how can we be sure you aren't here just to wipe us out? Infect the rest of us with some plague. To advance your plague to the next stage. To finish what you've started. Nip this ancient enemy thing in the bud. The Eldred exchange glances between them. Looks like that course of action was at least considered. The eldest of the Eldred looks back at BC. We need your help, yes, the Eldred tells BC. We believe you can help us track down this ancient one. You think I can help you do that? BC asks, incredulous. 
Yes. You think as he does. You share many characteristics with him that we do not, the eldest of the Eldred says. You think as he does. Oh, I really don't think so, B.C. protests. Well, certainly, you think more as he does than we do. We think, therefore, that your help could be valuable to us, your perspective. Okay, B.C. says, but I still don't understand. How could you let this happen? It was not our doing, the eldest of the Eldred protests. It was the Snack who found his capsule and kept it hidden. We did not know that Dolomay was still alive. Dolomay, B.C. asks, hearing the name. Dolomay was a mid-level military commander who fell out of favor and was labeled a criminal. He was frozen, his body placed in suspended animation and encapsulated, and placed in orbit of the homeworld of the ancient enemy as an example to others. When their world was destroyed, Dolomay and his capsule were cast out among the stars and forgotten. Eventually, the capsule drifted into the space controlled by the snack, and they found and recovered him. The eldest of the Eldred looks to the other Eldred, as if deciding what to say, how much to tell. The eldest seems to stare down his companions, and then continues. As I've said, the snack kept the capsule secret for hundreds of thousands of years. Then we discovered their secret, and we then kept that secret for six hundred years more. We substituted a fake capsule for the real one when we removed Dolomay from their homeworld. The snack to this day do not know they no longer possess the actual capsule. You people sure do like your secrets, don't you? B.C. asks. It was the prudent course of action, the eldest of the Eldred assures B.C., and Dolomay and his capsule stayed safely on our world of Eldre for over 400,000 years. We couldn't open the capsule, and we dare not try to penetrate it for fear of cataclysmic self-destruction. The ancient enemy was fond of that sort of trap. The snack had let it be for much the same reasons. Neither race was capable of operating the capsule. We had assumed that it would remain inert as it had for a million years and more. But then something happened. Something triggered the capsule, and it all changed. Dolomay was awakened. What happened? B.C. asks. What changed? The eldest of the Eldred looks down. It is our own fault. How? B.C. wonders out loud. We brought you to Eldre, the Eldred tells B.C. The capsule was close by the statue we brought you to and showed you. Somehow your presence there triggered the capsule's mechanisms. We can only guess the apparent cause and effect but the two events were nearly simultaneous. Why didn't you stop him? Anita asks. He escaped before we realized he had awoken, the Eldred explains. We did not find the empty capsule until just after al Salid had left us. By that time, it was clear that he had thought out days earlier and made his getaway. And you think we'll know where to find him? How? BC asks. We believe he is heading for your world if he is not there already, the eldest tells BC. There are none who will aid him within our expansive jurisdiction, the alien explains. And he can blend in with you and your race quite easily. So you see, we need your help. We cannot move among you ourselves without causing panic and pandemonium, we would imagine. Yeah, you're probably right about that, BC admits. Man, what a fucking bombshell. Gotta think this through. But if he's all you say the ancient enemy was, how can we stop him? Never mind, find him in the first place, B.C. asks. As we've said, you think more as he does than we do. We believe you can help us figure out how he will behave, where he might go. Right. So, where do we start, B.C. asks. Did he take one of your ships? We, um... The eldest of the Eldred pauses. We don't know. You're not giving me much to go on here, B.C. tells them. The Eldred exchange glances among themselves again. Do you, uh, have a picture of Dolomay? B.C. asks. The Eldred shake their heads, obviously puzzled. Can you describe him? B.C. asks. The glances shoot between them once again. Don't you even know what he looks like? B.C. asks. We do, the eldest of the Eldred tells B.C. We do not, however, have any sort of pictorial description to provide you. No picture? B.C. asks. The Eldred shake their heads in near unison. B.C. shakes his head. Could you describe him? Anita asks. What? B.C. and the Eldred ask in unison. We can get an artist, she tells them. B.C. doesn't know what she's driving at and looks at her puzzled. What? She protests. We have artists here. They can draw a likeness based on the Eldred's description. That's a great idea, Anita, B.C. exclaims. A, a what? Description? Drawing? Can draw? What is this? The Eldred asks. A, a drawing, Anita tells the alien. A likeness? A picture? She tries. The Eldred looked back at her blankly. Are you unfamiliar with the concept of art? Art? 
the eldest of the Eldred sniffs. We have heard the word, seen the term. Seen the term, Anita asks, her chance to be incredulous. It's a, it's a form of creation, she tells them. Creation, the eldest of the Eldred asks her, clearly not understanding. Maybe the Eldred have no means of original expression because they themselves are creations. A created race. Look, Anita says loudly, exasperated, we can at least try it, right? I think it will be easier to just do it than it will be to explain the process to you. She turns on a nearby comm. Do we have any artists on base right now, she asks. BC hears the low-volume voice as it responds. We've got at least one designer on base, if not an actual artist, Anita. Can you have them join me here in meeting room 1J? I'll get right on it, the voice assures her and signs off. When the artist gets here, Anita tells the Eldred, you'll tell him what features Dolomay has, what he looked like, and they'll try to recreate his image on a piece of paper. We see, the Eldred says. A thin young woman with long dark hair enters the room carrying a sketch pad and a box of pastels. Hi. Oh, oh wow, she says, her eyes going wide at the sight of the Eldred. Hi, Martha, Anita greets her. The Eldred here would like to describe a person to you so that you can draw his picture. Can you do that? I can try, she says. Martha spends about a half an hour trying to draw Dolomay. B.C. and Anita try to help by asking the Eldred questions. Tall or short, B.C. asks. Tall, the eldest of the Eldred answers. Uh, what color hair? How long was it, Anita asks. Blonde and short. Fat or thin? Thin. Cheekbones high or low? High. Uh, what color were his eyes? Blue, light blue. The girl finishes her drawing and holds it up for all to see. How is this? She asks the eldest of the Eldred. That, that appears to look like him, the alien confirms. Handsome devil, B.C. says. He looks like a Nazi, Anita says. The chiseled jaw, the steely eyes, the blonde hair. The others in the room look at her blankly. Nazis? World War II? Germany? 20th century? The rest just shake their heads. Doesn't anyone follow history anymore? Anita asks rhetorically. He won't blend in too easily if he looks like that, B.C. says, thinking out loud. Guy like that'll stand out in a crowd pretty much anywhere. He's what, 6'6"? Six, six? Yes, six feet and six inches, the eldest of the Eldred says. Tall, Anita says, nodding. B.C. winces. A headache? Now? Here it comes, building and hammering. The hammering. Headache? Anita asks. B.C. nods. I'm going to have to cut this short, I'm sorry, B.C. tells the eldest of the Eldred. But I can meet with you again later. If you must, the eldest of the Eldred says. Yeah, B.C. says, wincing again as the pressure builds at his temples. Uh, I'm afraid I must. Please excuse me. And then ducks out of the room. He grabs a passing tech. Is there a lounge nearby? A, a place where I can lay down? Are you okay? She asks B.C. Not really, he tells her. Do I look like I'm fucking okay? Do I look like I want a conversation? Why do you think I need a place to lie down? Come on, this way, she says. She leads him down the hall to a small employee lounge with a couch long enough for him to lie on. Thanks, B.C. tells her. No problem. Hope you feel better, she says, and then leaves him alone. He crashes onto the couch and passes out. B.C. feels like he's dreaming. He's lying on the couch in the lounge, but the walls of the room fall away, leaving him surrounded by a blank grayness. He once again feels like he's in the center of a vast, quiet ocean of gray, and once again a loud voice speaks inside his mind, not in his ears. Aha, uh -huh. so there you are. What? You? Who are? I've been hoping to find you again. Now I know you can't be God, because God is omniscient. He can see everywhere, and you obviously can't, or you'd have found me sooner. What is this place? It is where we speak to each other long distance. It is nowhere and everywhere at once. It is the sea of ourselves. You are not always here, young one. You come and go. I cannot find what is not there. Now you are here again. Who are you? Who do you say I am? I don't know. You're not the same. Not like that first time on Fortune Station. How do you know I'm different? There is no sound here, but somehow you sound different. I can't put my finger on it, but something is different. You're smaller somehow, somehow more closed off. Closed off? Interesting. You sense the discipline. That's good. I don't feel closed like that. No, you do not have the discipline. You are wide open to me. When you can see me. Clever. You do not trust me. A statement. A truth. You can see that. What else can you see? 
I can feel something slippery, oily, greasy. What are you doing in my head? Learning your language. Learning who you are, Bernard Campy, and learning... Get out of my head! Do not shut me out. How are you closed? Let me see, it feels like this. Do not! Do not do... Huh. That seems to have shut him out. B.C. wakes up. The strange dream still with him. The headache is gone. B.C. tries to hold on to the memory of the dream. He doesn't like what it implies. Great. I'm arguing with myself inside my head. Or the alternative. Some kind of creature got inside my mind, but somehow I blocked them and pushed them out. It felt real. Not like a vision or fantasy. Nothing holy feeling about it. Just holy shit. <laughs> was it real? What was it, if it was real? Who can I talk to about this? Hello, Anita? Yeah? I'm hearing voices and feeling greasy presences inside my head. Want to chat? How fast would the straight jacket and medication appear? Time to drug Pope B.C. He's lost it. B.C. sits up on the couch. One of the Vatican entourage, Reverend May, is sitting across the room in an easy chair reading a book. She looks up as he rises. Hello, Your Holiness, she says. Feeling better? Yeah, the headache seems to be gone, he tells her. Maybe you shouted it out, she says quixotically. What? You yelled out in your sleep, she informs him. What did I say? I, I believe it was. She clears her throat and attempts to mimic B.C. Get out of my head, you said. Something like that. Was that all I said? That, that was it. So, like I said, maybe you shouted it out of your head. She closes her book and gets up. I can show you to your apartments if you'd like to lay down on a bed and rest instead of that cozy little couch, she tells him. B.C. stands up. Sure, let's go, he says. Maybe get some real sleep. This time. No more invaded dreams. May shows B.C. to his apartments, the old Van Kilner residence on the base. He's pleased to see they've cut a quick passageway to Van Kilner's old apartments for him, eliminating the long stroll down the endless corridors. I'm not a fan of all that walking. Back in a proper bed inside the quiet apartment, B.C. is able to embark upon a relatively eventless sleep for the rest of the night. He wakes up refreshed, but for a few seconds he can't remember where he is. Where am I? What happened? Oh yeah, the asteroids. That fucked up dream last night in the lounge. B.C. sits up in bed. Suddenly the thrumming begins again behind both of his temples. The headache coming on once again. Headache? Fuck! Just stop, okay? Just stop! The headache stops. It stopped! Finally! B.C. sits in bed, waiting for the headache to return. Nothing. B.C. smiles. He closes his eyes. All of a sudden, B.C. feels like he's surrounded by a crowd of people, all yelling different things at him, all at once. He opens his eyes. No one else is in the room, but he can still hear the cacophonous choir of voices in his head. This is worse than the headache. I can take one voice inside my head, but this... Shut up! The noise inside his head stops. Ah, quiet. The discipline? Wonder why I just thought of that. Shut up, keep out. I should put up signs. Maybe I am losing my mind. Maybe this is something the Eldred are doing to me. A mind fuck to go along with their plague. Maybe this is it. I've lost my fucking mind. A pleasant but insistent beeping interrupts BC's train of thought, derailed as it may be. An alarm? I don't remember setting one. No, it's the calm. Nice tone. Must have been Van Kilner's choice. Hello, BC says. BC, it's Anita. Hello, Anita, BC says. Sorry about yesterday's quick exit there. One of my headaches came on pretty strong. Bad, she asks him. At first it was bad, he tells her, but then it got kind of weird. What should I say? I can't tell her. Weird? Yeah, BC says, thinking fast. It turned into a strange dream. I'm okay now. Hope she drops it. Okay? You know, I'm... I mean, we're all worried about you, BC. There are a lot of people depending on you now. You've become an important person whether you like it or not. That would be not. I don't like being on the news every time I sneeze. These headaches, Anita starts but trails off. What? BC, you've become a symbol of hope for people. But these headaches, they're here, away from everything. We can keep them under wraps. I don't think the elder are going to tell the media, she says. BC can hear her chuckle on the other end. But out in public? If people see you doubling over, it's... She tries to finish the thought. It's going to be bad. All I'm trying to say is, be careful. People look up to you now. I don't want them to look up to me, he says. You're the Pope. 
You're the top CEO, Anita exclaims. Get used to it, she tells him. It might not be an issue anymore, BC tells her. I think I might be getting these headaches under control. Really, she says. BC can hear the doubt in her voice over the comm. I know it might sound crazy, BC starts. If she'll go with me on this, maybe, maybe I can tell her more. But this morning I felt one coming on, and I was able to make it stop and go away. How, she asks. I thought it away. Just thought for it to stop, he says. That sounds pretty far-fetched to me. You just thought it away, she asks him skeptically. That's how it felt to me, he insists. And that's about all I'm going to say about any of it to you, evidently. Well, if it works for you, I, I guess go for it. I don't want to discourage you if it makes you feel better, she says in a patronizing tone of voice. Thanks, BC manages with sarcasm. Let's change the subject. When do the Eldred want to meet again, he asks her. They're gone, BC, she informs him. They left last night after you passed out. They left already? He can't believe it. The eldest of the Eldred said they've told us all we needed to know. He said they expected us to deal with the problem. Then they left, she says. Our problem? They let an ancient, high-powered, warlike proto-human loose, and it's our problem? They kept this guy on ice for centuries, and, and it's our problem? Get them on the comm for me, Anita. I want to talk to the eldest of the Eldred. Um, she says, pausing. What? We can't do that, BC. I'm sorry. Can't? Why not? We, we don't really have a way of contacting them. They always contact us. It's a video and audio signal, but shot across such a distance, well, we don't have a fraction of the power it would take to establish that kind of signal. We don't even know how it carries our response back to them, BC. It's FTL. FT what? he asks. FTL. Faster than light, she explains. It's nearly instantaneous. We'd love to know how they do it. So, it's don't call us, we'll call you, BC cracks? Pretty much, Anita admits. Pretty convenient, BC observes, and pretty arrogant. They held on to this guy, and all the while acted like we were the threat. And now it's our problem? I've got a problem with that. Well, better that they asked us to solve the problem than they just killed us all, Anita says. I wonder, BC says. I've been thinking about this, Anita. Maybe they've already killed as many of us as they could by the methods they find acceptable. They're strange that way. Self-limiting, kinda. They still kill billions of us. There's no way I'd be fucking Pope if any real cardinals were left. The old guard is all dead or dying. It is what it is, Anita says, matter-of-factly. What do we do next? I'm thinking I get up and get dressed, BC says. A wild thought occurs to him. And then I'm going to Mars. Mars, Anita says, shocked and surprised. Gotta go. Calm off, BC says, shutting her off. He jumps out of bed and gets ready to face the day. I told Al Salid we'd discuss all this. Now we have even more to talk about. That was Chapter 19 of Vatican Ambassador on Glow in the Dark Radio. So, by bringing BC to their planet, the Eldred inadvertently woke up and freed an actual member of the race they call the Ancient Enemy. A guy who'd been on ice for hundreds of millennia. Dolome. And he's likely talking mind to mind with BC. Yeah, you notice that? Because the Ancient Enemy were very much stronger mentally than we human beings. Now, Al Salid visited the Eldred too, just before this Dolome escaped, so BC wants to compare notes. He's going to go to Mars, or he wants to go to Mars. We'll see if he can on our next episode of Glow in the Dark Radio. Once again, a big thank you to my patrons for helping to keep Glow in the Dark Radio glowing. You guys are the energy that fires the whole thing keeps me in business, basically. So thank you. And if you want to become a patron and help support the podcast, I would love to have you on board. You can do so at patreon.com slash glowinthedarkradio, or just go to glowinthedarkradio.com and click the link to get over to Patreon. And that is all for this week. I'm your host, your writer and reader, Mike Luoma. Thank you again for listening. Glow in the Dark Radio. Glow in the Dark 
Glow in the Dark Radio. Radio. This podcast presentation is copyright 2023 by Michael F. Luoma and is protected under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License CC by NCND 4.0 Music by Kevin McLeod. You can find his work at Incompetech.com Mike's books are available in ebook, paperback, and audiobook wherever you find books online. Get links and more details at glowinthedarkradio.com and mikeluoma.com. This has been a presentation of Glow in the Dark Radio. <laughs>